for example, like whenever a guy in school would be very quiet, I noticed that teachers would like walk up to that guy and be like, hey, are you doing okay? But um, like, for example, I wouldn't answer any questions or anything or like raise my hand or anything during class and nobody walked up to me. Starting off with of autistic women who have been diagnosed at ages 50 to 90 or something like that. It's quite recently that uh, girls and women have been included in research on autism. So it's now they realize it's a, it's a difference and it's a big difference sometimes too. But yeah, why would you say it's important to get a diagnosis, Milan? When I was diagnosed, it felt like almost every single part of what was keeping me down for so long had been answered. It felt so nice to finally have an explanation because for the longest time I just thought I'm lazy or I'm a terrible person, I'm not a good friend, I'm not good enough, stuff like that. And I mean, it's also a question about what kind of help you get from society and what kind of understanding you're at least theoretically can get from getting an explanation to the difficulties and maybe some of the failures you had in life like maybe in school or with jobs or with relationships that all have an explanation and it's not about you and like that is something you have to remind yourself of now and then as well even if you know it like you are so well aware of everything and you're very open obviously about the diagnosis and, and the difficulties but still you get into bad thoughts about that you can't keep friendships or you're useless or worthless and, and not a good friend because it hurts it, it, it hurts not to be able to do things that you really really want to do but it's hard but all this thing with uh, sounds and surrounding and the sensory sensibility it makes you really tired and that is also a thing that when it comes to schoolwork or when it comes to a job situation you can work maybe a couple of hours a week uh, not a day i mean i know all this but also i have a problem because you, you seem to do so fine <laughs> i'm like yes hey hooray <laughs> things are working and then uh, we just don't understand how tired how tired you get. Do you feel it yourself? Because you want it so much yourself as well. And it's hard for you to be economic with your energy. Like you give it your all and then you have nothing left. Like Yeah. I never realized how much energy I'm spending. Like even me, like during that time, I didn't even notice how much I was pushing myself to the limit because I don't have that energy thingy that normal, normal yeah you, people have. you don't regulate you can't really regulate it's yeah. like you go all in yeah yeah that's why when i used to go to taekwondo i would put my all into the warm-ups because i couldn't understand how much i was supposed to put in <laughs> and i don't think even with instructions i would be able to regulate it as easily so even even for me i don't understand how to calm down most of the time it might also play a part in why it's so hard to figure out what the warning signs for a meltdown are. My brain doesn't give me the warning signs. That is a part of not being able to read cues. It's, it's physical cues, like you can't really feel when your body has had enough. Yeah. It's mental cues when you have exceeded your mental capacity or you're like drained of energy. Uh, it's cues that come from other people you can't read when they get tired of listening or get bored uh, of talking about the subject that you really love. So it's all sorts of uh, cues that is so hard to interpret. But it's also another cue that is, is much more dangerous and that you can't read situations when they become dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, in the case of those girls that kept pretending like it didn't exist, I didn't have 
any weird feeling about that because again i had no concept of what friendship was <laughs> um or how i should have been treated when they look into the, dif the different way of living a uh, grown-up men they've they've had like one relationship they've got one job but girls and women with autism they've had like a lot of relationships that they got into because of poor judgment <laughs> and they also jumped into jobs and activities that that wasn't good for them but they haven't been able to uh, discriminate so they just go for it and then it's not good so they have like a, a multitude of different activities and jobs and life experiences autistic women tend to not have a strong sense of womanhood because autistic people have been found to have more testosterone than regular women and so a lot of autistic women have identified as transgender or non-binary or something like that and it is extremely common and something that is very often overlooked getting to know your autistic tribe is so important because you feel so left out you can feel so lonely as an autistic person of course that's number one to get to the autism community where you can share experiences and realize that it's not you being crazy, it's not you being uh, oversensitive or stupid or whatever. It's, it's something that has to do with the autism and you should not uh, blame yourself for everything. Uh, but also for, for the family, uh, get into a community where you can support each other and help your children because your children need you and they need a lot of help and it's hard to do that by yourself because especially as a mother you get so much blame and so much uh, is put on you that it's your fault or that you're not doing uh, good enough so you need that community to be able to share your experiences and realize that this is a pattern it's not about you 